From ancient pieces of a 400 million year old piece of technology to underground fighter jets, here are 10 of the most incredible and mysterious archaeological finds ever. Puquios. In the dry valleys of southern Peru, an area famous for the mysterious Nazca Lines, there lies another mystery to behold known as Puquios. That's right, there is more to the landscape than the large spiraling lines through the valley. An underground network of ancient aqueducts can be found containing trenches, tunnels, and wells that bring water from the underground up to the surface. Thought to have been constructed by the same people who created the Nazca Geoglyphs, many of the aqueducts are still used by the inhabitants of the valley today. Spiraling funnel-shaped holes called ojos can be seen on the surface, with some as wide as 50 feet 15 meters, at the opening. They provided access to the water in the tunnel as well as serving as entrances for cleaning and maintenance. The wells also allowed wind into the canals to force the water through the system. The lower end of the system has open trenches that allowed the public to access it for drinking water, for bathing, and for washing clothes. They also used it as a channel for agricultural purposes. Although archaeologists have known about these aqueducts for a long time, they had not been able to pinpoint their age. Because they are made from the same materials as the surrounding terrain, it was difficult to carbon date them. They first appeared in historical text in 1605 from the writings of a Spanish Catholic priest, but some archaeologists believe that they could have been built by pre-Columbian people around 540 CE to combat prolonged droughts that struck the area at the time, with some possibly as old as 3,000 years or as recent as 1,200 50 years, these unique structures still hold many secrets buried underground. Wheel of the Gods A prehistoric stone monument found in the Middle East that originally went unnoticed for centuries is now believed to have been used for gruesome sky burials. The monument known as Gilgal Rephaim in the Golan Heights region is roughly as old as Stonehenge, but archaeologists still don't know why it was built or who built it. Some theorize it was an ancient calendar or sky burial site where dead bodies were placed on top of stone mounds to be picked apart by vultures. It was first spotted by archaeologists who were doing an aerial survey of the region in 1967. Its concentric stone circles were what first caught their eye, but a number of later excavations revealed it to be one of the oldest and largest structures in the region. Flint tools and shards of pottery were also found there and helped to date the site, with some scholars agreeing construction could have started as early as 3500 BC. Its name, which means Stone Heap of the Wildcat, has a 15 foot 4.5 meters high burial chamber at the center of five circles, the largest of which measures more than 500 feet 160 meters wide. Made from thousands of smaller rocks that together weigh over 40,000 tons, the monument still has many mysteries to behold. When standing inside the complex, it resembles a labyrinth of crumbling stones. Some still wonder whether the structure was built around its central burial mound or whether it was added later on. Either way, the impressive site is believed to have been constructed by a nomadic civilization in the area, which still lends an air of mystery to this huge monument. Who do you think it is? Could it just be a burial site for the mysterious sky burial? Or could there be some type of mysterious alternative purpose? Could this even have been a prehistoric landing pad for extraterrestrial spacecraft? It seems unlikely, but no one knows for sure. Let me know your opinion in the comments below, and after that be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like learning about these archaeological discoveries, you'll love the other videos that are in store. Obsidian Monkey Jar Mexico's National Anthropology Museum has many interesting and ancient items in its collections, but the origin of one of its most famous objects is still up for debate. An exquisite jar made from obsidian, a black stone, shows a monkey holding its tail above its head. Measuring 6 inches 15 centimeters high, the jar was first showcased in the museum's first major catalog 50 years ago and was described by Mexican archaeologist and historian Ramon Piñachan as one of the most valuable pieces in the museum and an absolute unique model. But some still question what the jar actually depicts, and its construction is even more puzzling. The vessel features a stylized monkey and is smoothly polished. But how would ancient people such as the Aztecs have been able to not only carve the jar with such intricate details, but to also polish it to such a pristine shine? Stone effigy vessels were usually created from a single piece of stone that was cut from the raw material using strings. Further cutting, drilling, grinding, and chiseling were also required before the piece was finished and it could be polished. Artisans carved the vessels with hollow drill bits made from long animal bones and reeds. Although there are several other monkey effigy vessels known to scholars, only one is a funerary offering. 
Explorers continue to guess whether the jar was made for members of the elite class and why they decided to use a spider monkey on the effigy. The ancient vessel was obtained by a doctor who saw it in the home of his patient in the late 1800s. Purchased from the farmer who found it on a hacienda in exchange for sheep, the museum later purchased the jar so it could remain in the country where it was made. That doesn't answer the question as to why the original creator created the monkey jar and how they managed to make such an exquisite piece with their limited resources. Kamchatka Peninsula in 2013, archaeologists from the University of St. Petersburg discovered a strange object made from metal parts on a remote peninsula. The reason why this is so strange is that the object is some 400 million years old and the components are gears that are similar to those found in a watch or computer. Inlaid in rock where it was found, the object is made from metal parts that formed a mechanism. The strange fossil, found by hikers, has hundreds of toothed cylinders making up the machine. Perfectly preserved in stone, archaeologists had to cordon off the area to prevent serious, curious onlookers. Could the object have been created 400 million years ago by some sort of intelligent being who had astonishing technological capabilities? Or could the object have simply fallen into a swamp or some other location that allowed it to reach fossilization and age in a shorter period of time? Whatever the case, this mysterious discovery continues to puzzle conspiracy theorists and archaeologists alike. Viking Rock Runestone the climate crisis continues to be a topic of debate for environmentalists and the average Earth lover to this day, but a series of ancient carvings on a Viking monument may show that even then the ancient people were worried about the cold climate crisis. A 9th century stone monument found in Sweden is believed to have been erected by Vikings. Weighing 5 tons and standing over 8 feet tall two and a half meters, there are 28 lines in the runic inscription. But even if you understand the symbols, that doesn't even mean you may necessarily be able to decode it. Written on the stone are riddle-like messages dedicated to various Norse mythologies. With more than 700 runes and other characters, there is only one line that is damaged, but that doesn't make deciphering them any easier. Until early 2020, scholars were able to read the inscriptions, but they didn't necessarily know what they meant. However, a study by scholars from Swedish universities were able to decode the message, and what they found was quite interesting. Some of the inscriptions are about the anxiety of the author over his son's death, as well as fears of a new cold climate crisis. Based on archaeological research from the years 536 to 550, Scandinavia was bombarded with a series of volcanic events that led to lower than average temperatures. Crops failed, people went hungry, and there were mass extinctions due to the catastrophe. The population of the Scandinavian peninsula fell by 50% during this time. By analyzing the text and the archaeology of the area, as well as the history of religions, scholars were able to decipher the carvings. Before the rune stone was erected, a number of other events, including a powerful solar storm, a cold summer that impeded crop growth, and a solar eclipse just after the sunrise may have been what inspired the creator of the rune stone to carve the ominous messages. Any of these events would have raised fears of the locals who believed in the Great Winter, the coming of Ragnarok, or the end of the world in Norse mythology, and could be the cold climate crisis they were fearful of. The Devil's Corkscrew In the 19th century, when geologists began exploring the fossil beds found in Nebraska's Badlands, they came upon a curious group of spirals made from hardened sand. Nicknamed Devil's Corkscrews by local ranchers, the formations were believed to be the remnants of prehistoric plant matter or possibly sea sponges. It wasn't until later when bones were discovered inside the corkscrews that experts found the real culprit of these strange formations. An ancient animal, similar to a beaver, called the Paleocaster, was the creator of the complex spirals using them as homes. It wasn't until 1977 when experts found the signature teeth marks of beavers on the spirals that they realized who had created them. With some standing 15 feet 4.5 meters long, the spirals were created from 15 to 30 million years ago. Located in the Sioux country of Nebraska, they have two parts, namely the screw, and a massive root that branches off from the lower end of the spiral. Located in about 500 square miles 1300 square kilometers of Nebraskan countryside, the spirals were first discovered in 1894 when an expedition set out to the badlands of Wyoming, Nebraska, Rocky Mountains looking for fossils. After finding some large corkscrews, the formations, composed of quartz, were first labeled as the work of the devil because they were so curious and had no explanation. Initially, explorers believed that they were made by some supernatural being, but the area where these fossils were found was once inhabited by an ancient beaver-like creature that lived in the North American Badlands during the late Oligocene period. 
The corkscrew-shaped burrows had side nesting chambers and other compartments that allowed for water drainage and to be used for the animal's excrement. When they were later abandoned by the animals, tree roots grew into the spiral-shaped burrows and fossilized. If you want to see these curious formations, head to the Agate Fossil Beds National Monument in northwestern Nebraska to see these unique creations. SU-25, MiG-25 when the United States sent teams to Iraq hunting for weapons of mass destruction, they ended up finding something they did not bargain for. Dozens of fighter jets from Iraq's Air Force were found buried beneath the sand, including one Cold War-era MiG-25 interceptor whose tail fins were poking up from the sand. A number of MiG-25 and Su-25 ground attack jets were also found buried in an airfield west of Baghdad. Intelligence experts estimated that Iraq had about 300 combat aircraft before the war started, all from the 1991 Kuwait War. Most of them were Soviet-made or older French fighters, as well as some of the most advanced fighter jets produced in the Soviet era. They originally escaped detection during the coalition bombing campaign, with some being buried or hidden under trees covered with camouflage sheets. Those that were destroyed in previous wars were littered across the airfield, so it would be difficult for bombers to choose their targets. The Russian fighter jets were found after American forces had already been working in the vicinity for weeks without knowing the aircraft were there. Their discovery is a stark illustration of the difficulty American forces faced while trying to find weapons of mass destruction in the country. The Ancient City of Archaim Older than the ancient city of Troy, Archaim is a 4,000-year-old settlement in the Ural Mountains. But its most curious feature is a circle some 530 feet 170 meters in diameter of ancient stones. The prehistoric settlement is estimated to at one time have 20 towns flourishing during the times of the pyramids were being built in Egypt. A site of strange burials and cave paintings, debate still rages over who the people were who lived there. Discovered in the late 1980s by a group of archaeologists who had been dispatched to the area to plan a new reservoir, strange embankments were discovered of a circular fortified settlement and clay ramparts over a log frame. Family dwellings were also found including hearths, cellars, and wells with early metal works and furnaces in each of the dwellings. More than 20 of the circular settlements have been found throughout the southern Urals in northern Kazakhstan, suggesting that the civilization was widespread with various townships built to house them. Ancient Stone Age cave paintings were found nearby, suggesting they depended on horses for chariots and farm work. A number of bodies were also found that had strange burial traditions, including the remains being placed in a fetal position while others were uniquely posed. The circular construction of the settlement also leads some to believe that it is tied to a Greek mythological city like Asgard and Atlantis, with some Russian writers believing its name Archaim combined the words for sky and earth. It could mean that the ancient people looked to the skies for wisdom and religion. Selenographia A one-time painter to the king and the Prince of Wales, John Russell, was an artist with a keen interest in astronomy. So enthralled by the beauty of the moon, he created a lunar globe known as Selenographia, which depicted the moon in intricate detail. A large lunar sphere that had a small terrestrial sphere, the globe was created to reproduce the motions of the moon with respect to the Earth. One side is illustrated with the other remaining blank, depicting how the moon is visible from Earth. Spending 30 years to perfect his map of the moon, Russell produced detailed drawings before he invented the Selenographia. Made from paper mache and covered with plaster, the lunar sphere is mounted on a heavy brass hemisphere with parts that are cut away to show its details. Created in 1797, the portrait artist designed it to show the wobble of the moon as it rotates. He used a micrometer and telescope to obtain accurate measurements of the moon as he created the globe. Made from brass and paper, the terrestrial globe is considered the oldest three-dimensional representation of the moon with its brass mechanism allowing it to turn. Offering Table of Def G a rare round table made from white alabaster, the Offering Table of Def G is a remarkable piece from ancient Egypt. Carved with intricate hieroglyphs, the detailed surface has small compartments, each with the name of a dish, a drink, or a purifying agent. With over 90 products in total, the top of the table also has seven shallow cavities that are intended to hold a special oil. But who exactly was Def G? Also known as the acquaintance of the king, highly revered by the great god and great one of the Upper Egypt Ten, Def G's round offering table is a rarity because most tables made for a similar purpose were rectangular. The tablet is made of 5 inches 12 centimeters, thick alabaster and is 19.3 inches 50 centimeters, in diameter. 
The rare artifact is a stunning example of the ancient civilization, dating back to the 6th dynasty, which ruled from 2323 to 2150 BC. The tablet is currently housed at the Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands. Wondering what such a table was used for? A fundamental part of any ancient Egyptian funerary rite was to provide offerings to the deceased, and this tablet was used for that very reason to ensure life after death for the deceased. Created during the time of the Old Kingdom, which is more known for the construction of the pyramids, the tablet of Defji is another ancient relic that shows off the artistry of some of Egypt's most gifted stonemasons. With many prominent titles, Defji is a bit of an anomaly, but with such an intricate table created for him, he must have been a man of great importance. Which of these strange archaeological discoveries is the most impressive to you? Let me know your thoughts below with a comment, and thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, and see you again soon for another informational and fun video.